Hi there. <clears throat> we are going to be finding the equations of lines today. Some of this will be difficult. Some of it will be harder. Most of it you did in beginning algebra, but maybe not all of it. So, let's get to it. This is the equation of a line, a straight line. You can tell because you can't see the powers on the x and the y. That means the power is 1 on the x and the y. Darn, there. That's a 1, believe it or not. Okay. Now what we have to do in order to find the slope in the y-intercept is change this equation, which is in standard form or general form, it's called either one, into slope-intercept form, and you're familiar with slope-intercept form. It's y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept and it's the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, actually. m is the slope. So we're going to solve for y. Here we go. Okay. 3x plus negative 8y equals 9. It's just easier to do it that way. Now I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. Three x minus three x is zero. And I'll bring down the plus negative eight y. Now that equals, I'm going to put a plus in front of the nine because it's positive. Now I'm going to take the negative three x and put it in front and then put the plus nine behind. All right, over here, zero plus negative eight y is negative eight y equals negative three x plus nine. I'll divide each term by negative eight because I have a line here. Instead of just drawing a line and putting negative uh, 3x plus 9 over negative 8, I need to uh, find the slope in the y-intercept, so I need to have the terms kept separate. Now this is going to be negative 3 over negative 8x plus 9 over negative 8, well, that's going to be positive 9 over negative 8 is negative. So negative 9 over 8. Meanwhile, negative 3 over negative 8 is positive 3 eighths. So the equation of our line now, because the negative 8s canceled each other out, is y equals 3 eighths x minus 9 eighths. This number in front of the x is our slope. A uh, plus b. Well, yeah, plus b. Negative 9 eighths. 
So the slope is 3 eighths. The y-intercept is 0, negative 9 eighths. I hope this is bringing back some fond memories. Maybe not so fond. Just wait. I accidentally put two first. Oh, and by the way, I have tons of notes for you up here that will help you. I hope you take the time to read them. We're going to find the slope given two pairs of points. That means there's a line. Each of these points is on the line. Well, there are a lot of other points on the line, too, but those are the only two we know, and we're going to calculate the slope from those two points. I call this point x1 and y1, and I call this point x2 and y2. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, let me explain this first. x1, y1, that 1 means that this is point 1. And x2, y2 means that this is point 2. Okay, so y2 minus y1. What we have here is we're going to have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, y2 is negative 7. Y1 is negative 1, X2 is positive 3, and Y2 is positive 9. If you do it this way, then when you have a minus minus or minus a negative, you won't get it all mixed up. You won't forget to put the extra negative sign. Okay, well, whenever you subtract a negative, you add a positive. Negative 7 plus 1 over 3 minus 9 equals negative 6 over negative 6, which is positive 1. So the slope is 1. It's not very exciting, is it? But that happens. Remember, you can always back up and watch again. All right, we're going to start finding equations of lines. These first couple of problems are pretty easy because notice we have to find the slope-intercept equation. That's y equals mx plus b. And they tell us what m is and what b is. Okay, let me put a box around that so it won't be confusing. y equals, all I have to do is look at the information over here, negative 6x plus 8. That's it. Down here, m is 6.7, b is negative 7. So y equals mx plus b. y equals 6.7x 
minus 7. Oh, and this one is like that. Okay, we're going to have y equals mx plus b. y equals negative 19 fifteenths x minus 5. That's all there is to that. Those three were the kind of problems we call gimmies because they're giving you the answers. Anytime you have a zero in the in the x position of a point, the other number is your y-intercept. Well, actually, zero negative five is the y-intercept, but negative five is the b number. That's what I meant to say. Okay, now, this is going to be a little more difficult. You're given the slope and a point that is not the y-intercept. How do I know? Because this number is not zero. Okay, so here's what we have to do. We're going to use the point slope formula. Point slope formula All right. Here it is. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We have all the information we need. <clears throat> this is x1, this is y1, and this is m. So y minus 4 equals 6 times x minus 9. Okay, now, we're going to distribute the 6. y minus 4 equals 6x minus 54. 6 times negative 9 is negative 54. Now, I'm going to add 4 to both sides in order to get y by itself. We call that isolating y. So y plus 0, that's y, equals 6x minus 54 plus 4 is minus 50. And there you go. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to write, or because I have a slope and a point that is not a y-intercept, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus 7 equals negative 3 times x minus 1. Going back up here just to check something. Okay. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 3. y minus 7 equals negative 3x. Now be careful here. 
Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Then I'm going to add 7 to both sides of the equation. So that negative 7 plus 7 is 0, which leaves me with y all by itself equals negative 3x plus 3 plus 7 is plus 10. And there is the equation of your line. Now here's an equation like the one we just did, similar, only it's worded differently. Find an equation of the line with slope 6 and containing the point negative 3, negative 7. There are more words there, so it looks like a different problem, but it's not really. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now in this problem though, you're going to be subtracting a negative two times. y minus negative 7 equals slope 6, 6 times x minus negative 3. Now you learned in beginning algebra, but I only just realized, oh heck, let's do it correctly. Doggone it. hate it when those things sneak up on me. When you have nested parentheses, that is parentheses and parentheses, it's considered good form to write it like this. It does not change the meaning. It just makes it easier to see this set of parentheses and differentiate it from this set of parentheses. Do you absolutely have to do it? No. Uh -uh. But I'm the teacher. I'm trying to be good. Okay, over here, y minus negative 7 is y plus 7. Equals. Now, I'm going to clean this up before I distribute the 6. This is x plus 3. Negative negative is a plus. Now I will distribute the 6. Boom. Boom. Sound effects always help. y plus 7 equals 6x plus 18. Subtract 7 from both sides. The only reason I went down is I didn't leave myself room over here. Seven minus seven is zero, so I'm left with a Y on the left. On the right, I will have six X plus 18 minus seven. That will be plus 11. And there's the equation of the line. The line that meets these specifications. Does that mean the line only has one point? No, lines have an infinite number of points, a whole bunch. But we only know one. Okay, now, we're going to have an extra step or two, so we have to go slowly, I have to go slowly, and really concentrate on what I'm doing, 
because of this fraction slope. Watch what I do. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus negative 9 equals 7 eighths times x minus 6. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to clean that up. Minus minus is a plus. So y plus 9 equals 7 eighths times x minus 6. While you can, if you're comfortable, distribute 7 eighths into there, there is an easier way. What we're going to do is temporarily get rid of the fraction. This is how I do it. I multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator of the fraction. Watch what I do. I'm going to multiply by 8. I'm going to put parentheses around the equation on the left and multiply by 8. Now that did not hurt too, too badly. Except, just to make sure you can see it, I'm going to write it in blue. Now, over on the left, I'm going to distribute the 8. That's not a big deal. But over on the right, I'm going to write 8 as a fraction, 8 over 1. They're the same thing. But, here, let's start from left to right so I don't miss any steps. Here's the whole reason I did this. We multiply left to right. That means I'm going to be multiplying 8 over 1 times 7 over 8. And this multiplication is going to take first, uh, take place before anything gets multiplied by x minus 6. What this does is this allows me This 8 and this 8 will cancel. It will allow me to cross cancel. 8 and 8 cancel each other out. Now I'll have 8y plus 72 on the left. And I'll be left with a 7 times x minus 6. Now I'll distribute the 7. And again, 8y plus 72 equals 7x minus 42. Isn't it nice we get to enjoy not having any fractions for a few minutes. Okay, now I'll subtract 72 from both sides of the equation. Seventy-two minus seventy-two is zero on the left. 
so I'm left with 8y. On the right, I'll have 7x minus 114. That's a lot. Then I'll divide by 8, but I'm about to get hit by this equation here. So I'm going to go up here and rewrite this. 8y equals 7x minus 114. Now, the inevitable. I'll divide by 8, divide by 8, divide by 8. So I'll have y equals 7 eighths x minus, watch out, we're going to go to the calculator and math fract this. Here we go. 114. Well, I could say minus, couldn't I? I could say negative. Negative down here with the negative. 114 divided by 8. And I'm going to math, frac, enter. And that'll be negative 57 over 4. I could have divided the top and the bottom by 2 gotten the same answer. And there's our equation. Okay, now we're going to be doing the real deal. Finding the equation of a line when all you're given is two points on the line. This is a two-step problem. You're, you weren't given the slope. We have to find the slope. So step one is always, always, always Find the slope. Find slope. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1. x1, y1, x2, y2. So that'll be 8 minus 5 over 6 minus 2. So that'll be 3 over 4. Our slope is 3 fourths. Now I use the point slope formula. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. 3 fourths is my slope. Y minus 5, x minus 2. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator 4. Whoa, the fours cancel, and what I'll be left with is four parentheses y minus five 
equals 3 parentheses x minus 2. I distribute, and I distribute. 4y minus 20 equals 3x minus 6. I'll add 20 to both sides. Because negative 20 plus 20 is 0, that will leave me with 4y on the left. And on the right, I'll have 3x minus 6 plus 20 is plus 14. Then divide by 4. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. On the left, the 4s cancel, leaving me with y. On the right, I'll have 3 fourths times x plus, I mean, this is really easy to do by hand. Divide 14 by 2 and divide 4 by 2. You always have to divide by the same number. That'll give us 7 over 2. Or you can use your calculator to math. Frack. And there's our equation. Kind of admiring it. Now again, we have the same thing. Find an equation of the line containing the given pair of points. x1, y1, x2, y2. km equals y2 minus y1 over x2. 2 minus x, 1. So, 8 minus negative 9 minus negative 9 over 8 minus negative 9. That'll be 8 plus 9 over 8 plus 9 which is 17 over 17, which is 1. I love slope 1. Makes everything so easy. Okay, you know, I could use this point now for x1, y1. Let me write this first. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But wouldn't you rather use positive numbers? Yeah, I would. So, don't tell. No, this is something you can really do. You have to have one point. You know that both of these points are on that line. So you can choose 8-8 eight, eight just as easily or more easily than you can choose negative 9, negative 9. Do you have to? No. I'm just being lazy. Y minus 8 equals 1 times X minus 8. Y minus 8 equals X minus 8. Add 8 to both sides of the equation. And look what I get, if I can find my pen. Yeah, I'll have y plus 0, which is y, equals x plus 0, which is x. This, this is the line y equals x. This is 
the generator of all straight lines. This is a very important function called a basic function. And it's also written as f of x equals x, which is also called the identity function. That's just a little added miscellaneous knowledge for you. You're going to meet the basic functions and the identity function, and in particular, when you take college algebra. Okay, ooh, last one. Find the equation of a line containing the given pair of points. All right, well, x1, y1, x2, y2. Notice this is the x-intercept and the y-intercept. m equals 9 minus 0 over 0 minus negative 7 equals 9 over 7. Now, y minus y1. equals m times x minus x1. Again, I'm going to opt for uh, the two non-negative numbers. So, y minus 9 equals 9 sevenths times x minus 0. Y minus 9 equals 9 sevenths x. Add 9 to both sides, plus 9 plus 9. And we have y equals 9 sevenths x plus 9. And there you go. We have just found the equations of 12 lines. Next time, we're going to be finding the equations of lines that are parallel or perpendicular. And we'll have to talk about what those mean. You briefly talked about the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines when you were in beginning algebra. Now we're going to be using that information and reviewing it um, and finding the actual equations of the lines. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.